This is Gordon today going to do another video on finding out what the problem is why these batteries are going down. We've got three batteries on this truck and the last few days that I worked there were starting issues in the morning but then it ran started fine. I have to start it oh 10 20 times a day on the job. Batteries were going down overnight but then after I get it going in the morning it was okay. Well it's warm out and it should not be doing that. I cleaned these batteries up and load tested them early this spring before it, would, before it got warm. And now we're in September. So all three of them passed the load test, but it's acting like something is turned on and pulling the power down or one of these batteries has failed and is pulling the other two down. So I am going to separate the batteries just like I did on the load test video. I'm going to take this cable off here or this one, either one. You've got to take them off and then test each individual battery separately with a load tester. All the batteries are down right now because the truck has been sitting here over the weekend and I was in the dashboard. We'll get a quick picture of that. And the voltmeter was down to 10 volts. There's my voltmeter. 10 volts. It should be holding at least 12, 12 to 13 volts. So back over here, these batteries do look awful, all this dust on them, but that should just be dust. That should not be any kind of a conductor. If that were the case, it would that would pull the batteries down. Uh, if there was like acid laying on top of the battery or something like that but that's just dust from where I work at it shouldn't be pulling the batteries down I am going to clean that off with a brush and an air hose when I get started out here and we'll pick up the video after I get cable off and get ready to do a load test and find out which one of these batteries is pulling the other two down I've got this cleaned off a little bit now what I'm going to do, since I'm down to 10 volts, I won't get a very good reading on the load tests on each individual battery, so I'm going to put a charger on it for just a little bit, maybe half an hour. It's not going to charge all three batteries up, because if I charge all three of them up good, the bad one might pass the load test, and I'll have to wait until it goes down again to find out which one it is. So. To keep that from happening, we'll just charge them up for a little bit. Um, if it were one battery, I'd charge it for maybe 10 minutes, but half an hour for all three batteries while they're all hooked up, that'll work fine. Come out and separate them and do a load test. Go on and take this negative off of here. Do my load test like this. Probably the battery on this end because I put the new ones here and moved the two old ones back that way whenever I have to change one. So that should be the oldest one. I've probably saved a lot of money over the years by not changing all three at the same time every time. But I really shouldn't wait until there's a problem to test them. I only put a half hour charge on all three batteries together, which is at like 10 minutes apiece if I was doing them separate. We're showing 11 volts. This is going to fall flat on its face when I pull this trigger. And it goes down to 9, and it's steady falling quickly. 8, and it's falling down. So that battery's not doing anything. Let's try these other ones. That one's holding. Still not a full charge because I only put a few minutes charge in it. And I'm just moving that negative clamp down the line. I left the positive on there because the positive's hooked up to all three of them so that can we're just testing these individually like that. 
that meter back in there again. I don't think you saw what how it read on that one in the middle. Let's see how it does on this one. This should be the newest battery. Should be the best. Well, let's show in week two. Let me see how this one showed again. This one actually showed the best. I charged these batteries up, these two back here. This one was separated because I knew it was it failed the test pretty bad, just flat fell on its face. These two together I thought were going to be okay. Only the middle one is passing the test good. I charged them up and separated them and uh, did another load test and this one did not do well on the load test again only this one did well so I'm charging this one again all by itself for a while and um, I got the cable back here on this but it, they're still all hooked up there on the positive it's just that the negative is not this is the only negative that's on so that's the only battery getting charged I got a suspicion that I may have two bad batteries here, but I'm not sure until I charge this one up by itself for a couple of hours and see how it tests. I'm back on that later. I'm back on these batteries again. And as you can see, I wound up buying three new batteries. One of them was holding a charge. One of them was pretty much dead, and the other one was not holding a charge real good. If I put a load test on it by itself, it would it would just start to fade out after a few seconds. So I took those two back for cores, and the one that was holding a charge, I saved it. I'll stick it in something else around here. I got a bunch of machines and vehicles around here. So we put two, uh, put three new batteries in because it's September now. Winter will be here in a minute, and it'll need. Uh, to make sure I have good batteries and put a new ground cable on Let's see if anybody saw my last video cleaning the batteries then uh, one of these ground cables was broken that's not the original ground strap it broke off I just made that and bolted it on uh, you know ground the metal down to clean shiny metal bolted this thing on really really tight and uh, so that's my ground terminal to um, put these cables on. So it does use the frame for a ground, and up by the motor, it comes off the frame and goes to the starter. So we got uh, we're going to have two ground straps on here again. Those are great big ground straps, and it's just a short run. It's really not any better than two, but if one breaks, we still got the other one. So uh, that's basically all it's good for in this case <clears throat> so but it is a long run to the motor to the starter from back here and it's got two good heavy cables going all the way up to the starter and so that's good I definitely want two of those but this short of a run and like I said it's not really necessary one is just as good as two as far as being able to carry the load but um, I had one that broke off and so I was living on the other one and didn't even know it for quite a while. So at least it didn't stop me out there on the road. I found out about it and I'm able to put another one on now. So I'm cleaning these things off and I realized I'm not taping. I better get to taping because there was some like oily stuff on here. I sprayed some brake cleaner on a rag. Anything that is not a conductor is an insulator or in electrical terms a semiconductor but uh, we're not getting into that. We need clean solid connections out here in the weather where anything and everything can get on these batteries. So any contaminant on there needs to go definitely and so I took some brake cleaner on a rag and clean that off. I'm going to get a couple more. Took sandpaper, polished these um, these things up. Everything's going to get cleaned up, put back together, get ready for winter. 
Yep, anything that's not metal, you definitely want to get it out of there. If it's paint, grease, or if you had a bad connection and you got burnt metal, that needs to go because that's also an insulator. It's one thing you'll see on copper, it'll turn pink. It'll turn like a flat, non-shiny pink and gray color when it has been burned. Um, I'm going to put a washer. These go to my power inverter. I'll put these on first. And I made these power inverter cables because I have a big heavy duty one in there actually kind of halfway around the house on it whenever the electric is off around here so um, I'm going to put that on here as well I made these out of welding cable probably number three welding cable Put a washer on that. And one of these nuts here. I'll tighten that down some more in a few minutes. Do the same thing over here on this one. Like that, and then some of these that get grounded, and some that get on hot. The one that's on the fuse naturally goes on the hot, so that's going to go to this side, and these over here get grounded. They go to the computer that the motor runs on. The truck doesn't have a computer for itself, only for the motor. I'm thankful for that. I wouldn't want a truck that runs on a computer. I don't like that. I'm not a computer geek. This plain old electricity, I know how to work with that pretty good. But I'm not good with computers, computerized trucks and cars. I'm just going to put these on over here. I know this one's tight. Mm. Put these on here. I got a screw fixed up for that right here. It's uh, the right length. I'm going to take it to the brush wheel, clean it up. Be right back. I'm back with this piece I made. Let's see if we can zoom in on it a little bit. This is just a uh, a nut bolt and a and a washer that. I stuck together a couple years back, maybe five, ten years ago, I'm not sure when, to screw into the top of these nuts that have the, these stainless steel nuts. If I did this work all the time, I would get these things pre-made or I would make them out of stainless steel. I just haven't uh, had a need to prioritize that yet, so this old rusty one will have to do. We'll have good contact on the stainless steel side for sure. For you guys that got Detroit engines like this one, this is one of the first things you want to check if you're having engine trouble. Not wanting to run and giving you bad codes and weird things. First thing you want to check is these contacts on these things right here because this is what your engine computer runs off of. Now this is an old truck. I don't know what they're doing on new ones. And I'm not going to buy another one, so I won't even find out. When this one's done, I'm done working on trucks. Maybe I'll work on other people's trucks. I'm down to two more of these nuts that are dirty, and I don't I need one in here. I'm going to go clean one up. If 
Finally got enough washers on this to get that tight on there. Did it off camera, sorry about that. But, but that is very important that those computer contacts are on there clean and tight. And make sure that these negative cables can't get Make sure you're not close to something like this where that, that can cut it. It's sitting on top of this heavy insulated part here, over here. Finishing this part up over here. I have a couple of extra washers out here. I'm going to use them. Well, I got one extra one. It'll fit. I just want to just make that a little better contact. A little stiffer contact on that. Wouldn't hurt to have one on top of that either. It's awkward position. It's hard to tell just how tight I'm cranking these. But everything needs to be tight. probably putting 40 foot-pounds on there and probably pushing 50 or 60 pounds with a and then wrench more than what you normally put on a 3-8 stud but they just have a tendency to loosen up if you don't get them real tight the first time I think we're ready to put the battery cover back on it First, I'm going to fire up the motor and make sure we're ready to go. Okay, we're ready. Well, I think that'll be the end of this battery video. Thank you for watching.